Hello, I am Test Drive, and welcome to episode 28, Forza Motorsport 2. We're in this episode. We're buying a pretty special car to do some races with. Uh, so as I was mentioning last episode, or episode before, uh, you can buy the cover car from this game in the game. It's the 2003 Fairly Z Custom Edition. Um, it's not a really fantastic car, but it's an A-Class, and it's got 370 horsepower, so... It's okay. An echo on the mic. What kind of echo? I don't know. I don't know where the echo would be coming from. Uh, but we're going to buy this. And we're going to hopefully be able to upgrade this. What is this? Oh, speed. Hey, uh, orange protege. I've seen a bunch of those in orange. But we're going to hopefully buy upgrades. Yes, we can, thankfully. We need to upgrade this car to, like, S... something. I don't actually know what. Uh, hopefully I can. It can only be supercharged, and you can actually change the engine out? That's weird. What? So you can put... An RB26. You can put all wheel drive RB26s from either the V Spec 2 NUR or just the V Spec 2. But the NUR has more horsepower. And they both have less horsepower, and this car has factory. Uh, what? Uh, hopefully, I don't have the money. I'm gonna supercharge this car. Fuck it. We're supercharging it. Yeah. And the thing about four, uh, the engine swaps in this game is that they automatically swap the uh, drivetrain, too. Sure, we'll do that. Like, if you get an RB26 out of a Skyline, it's going to be make your car all-wheel drive. Uh, let's see, what's our... The handling is actually not too bad on this car, I'm not going to lie. What are we at? A58? I think that's close to what the Sylvie S15 is. Uh, we'll see, though. I'm just glad. Oh, we can't actually paint this car. Okay. Interesting. Um, but we're going to go to the Manufacturer Club races. I have, like, zero money left. But we're going to be racing to get uh, the Sylvia S15. Top secret. Make must be Nissan. Nothing other than that. So we're A58, A64, close enough. I think the tires might be fine. The handling is not actually that bad uh, rated for this car. And plus, the S15 that we're racing against, which is a top secret S15, is going to be... Oh, hmm. Nissan Speedway. Huh. That might be interesting. But I think the tires on this might be better than uh, what this, the uh, Sylvia has. V6 fourth gens, like, you're talking about Camaros and Firebird fourth gens, or like some other kind of fourth gens? So, let's go. Nissan Speedway. First time racing on Nissan Speedway, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're not worth much at all. So hopefully this car has a good top speed. Because if, if it doesn't, uh, there's going to be a problem. I know the Sylvia does not have a good top speed. Um, it's, it tops out at like 160, 170, I think. So I'm hoping that this car is at least a little bit better than that. We have four laps on here. Alright, so we're up to 165, and it's still pulling away. Or maybe not. Hold on. Oh, we're catching up. Not even a chance. <laughs> Get topped out, nerd. You think you can beat me? I can go 180 miles per hour. Also, this car has really good uh, aerodynamics as well. I mean, vaguely good at least. The spoiler's good. A V6 fiber with a bird on the hood. Nice. I filmed a, uh, a V6 third gen firebird a long time, not a long time ago, but like a year and a half ago. 
Wasn't that the car dealership that I worked at, but, uh... No, it's a six-speed. It's just not topping out in fifth gear, so... I have no reason to take it out of fifth gear. It's just gonna slow down in sixth gear. <clears throat> So this was the one race I was kind of having some worries about, but no problems whatsoever. And I don't even know where like the the actual production skylines and stuff are. They're somewhere well be at, well back behind me. God, oval racing with the controller and thumbsticks. Ah! Trying to make it around these turns without uh, turning too much or too little is hard. Imagine if I had a wheel, but then the wheel would have a huge dead zone on it, because that's how this game works. Trust me, I've tried to use a wheel on this game. A good wheel, a Fanatec wheel, and it was not good. I'll send me a quick as hell race for only four laps. <clears throat> what if I don't want a fourth gen Firebird or Camaro? <laughs> How do I factor into that? And super easy race is super easy. <laughs> Oh, and then the game switches the car, or shifts the car in the sixth gear. It just stays at the same speed. Ah, oh, the R32 Skyline, dead last. Feels bad, man. Which engines are you talking about? The uh, Are you talking about the Firebirds or something in this game? Because the Firebirds are 3.8s. They're the 3.8 series, too, I guess. <clears throat> the older ones came with a 3.1. Or a 2.8, depending on uh, how old you get. Ooh, we have Nissan Speedway next. That's fun. So, let's get on to it. So. Oh, yeah, they did come with a 3.4 sometimes, didn't they? I forgot about the 3.4. Yeah, the 2.8s came on, like, the super early 3rd gens. The 3.4 isn't... No, well, yeah, the 3.1 the is better than 3.4, is what I've heard. Alright, this race might actually be a slight problem, because this, this fucking Sylvia is stupidly fast in acceleration. I just have to get in front of him and block. Oh, please don't wreck into that. Oh, okay. Damage, please. Uh, felt head gaskets, yeah. Head gaskets definitely don't last longer than the 3.4s. But I like how GM had a really good 3.8 V6, and Ford had a truly terrible 3.8 V6 that also blew head gaskets like crazy. Out of the same, like the same years of uh, cars as well. Cause like fuck, you get like a, a Pontiac Bonneville with a 3.8, or like a Buick Regal. They run forever. Yeah, the 3800 Series Two is ridiculously good engine. Even the supercharged ones don't usually have any problems at all. Which is surprising, cause usually uh, introducing forced induction in any way, shape, or form into an engine is going to not do good on its reliability. But those are surprisingly good, supercharged. And they make an okay amount of power, too. I think the Buick's made like 240. 
No, 3800 was first introduced in what? Early 80s? Because it was, uh, well, I guess late 70s. It's so long as Chevy's been around since well before that. <clears throat> it's like 327s and shit were around in the mid 60s. Because I'm pretty sure those are included in that too. I think the 3800 or 3.8 was first introduced, like in the the Buicks and stuff in the late 70s, mid to late 70s. So this race is not going bad at all. Uh, not to much surprise, honestly. I was slightly worried, but eh. No reason. <clears throat> it's like... People, you know, people ask, like, hey, I drive a shitload of miles all the time to work and back and whatever. I drive on the highway a bunch. What car should I get? And the, uh... 1960... 61? For the 3.8? Or the small block? But, uh, it's like, what car should I get for, you know, long highway drives or whatever? Um... It's either Lexus LS400, which is why I have mine, <coughs> or like a Buick Regal with a 3800 Series 2. Those are like the ultimate cars you can buy for like, you know, a comfy, long distance daily driver. Because both of them will literally run forever if you keep up a maintenance. And that's why I have an LS400. There's some other good ones too, but those are usually about the best you can get. I still love that I put a supercharger on this car, not a turbo. Did it tell the Trans Am to the levels one shit itself rip? I mean, I went from dailying a uh, 98 Ranger with a four cylinder to my LS400, which was quite an upgrade, I have to say. So, I've never really, well, I guess I, I technically daily to 04 Wrangler, Jeep Wrangler Sahara before that, even though it wasn't very far and it was, you know, when I was in high school. <clears throat> but, uh, I've never really dailyed a car that, like, isn't known to be reliable. Because all the four cylinder Rangers on Craigslist have well over 200,000 miles. Mine had 198,000 on it when it sold it. Um, and shit, even my Ram that I have now is known to be a fantastic, reliable vehicle. And there's a 318 and a 5-speed. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right, Tuner Guy. It is a centrifugal supercharger I put on this thing. So I would not be surprised if it is that exact one. I just thought it was weird that it didn't have a, uh, turbo option at all. Later, nerds! Get lapped! Isn't there an achievement for lapping people? Yeah, there is. Crushing victory. Cool beans. Daily boring 04 Civic. At least my daily is somewhat interesting. I can consider an LS400 somewhat interesting. I mean, like, I see maybe one every couple of weeks, if even. Like, in general, an LS400. Whether it be an older one like mine or a newer one. I see a few uh, LS430s here and there. <clears throat> 95 Civic. Uh, a Civic broke? Can't believe it. I like how I saw this, this listing up for the Protégé that you posted earlier. And it's 2003 Mazda Mazda Speed Protégé Speed. That is quite the name. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be the engine. It's still a Civic. Oh, oh. So, it's not an actual problem with the car. It was whoever put the hood pins on there. <laughs> I would daily an 04 SI Civic, the SI hatchback. That's probably, like, the only Civic of that generation I would daily. 
Like the normal ones, the coupes and sedans aren't bad, but they're not incredibly interesting. At least the uh, SI hatchbacks were all manuals, and they were, you know, at least somewhat interesting. A little hatchback, a little hot, a lot, eh, little hot hatch. I have too many cars right now. I have three. Probably still soon to be four, but I still need to work that out. No four coupe, haha. <laughs> Forehead. <clears throat> you have the uninteresting one. Is it at least a stick shift? I say as I daily drive an automatic Lexus. Oh, that's good. You got, you got part of it right. <laughs> All of my cars that I've owned except for... Well... I don't know if I should include my LeBaron on this list or not. Because, like, I had a 90 LeBaron that wasn't really mine because I never put my name on the title. But I, I was mine. I was given to me. But then it was sold before I actually put my name on the title. Uh, but it was an automatic. And then my LS400 is an automatic. But my Ranger was a stick shift. My TC is a stick shift. And my Ram is a stick shift. And it hated Super SDR. That'd be cool. I'd love to 5-speed swap my LS400. But I feel like it would be too much pain for what it's worth. Like, I really don't care if it's automatic or manual, honestly. Automatic's perfectly fine by me. Uh, especially for the traffic that I drive in, because I drive through usually about 45 minutes of uh, stop-and-go rush hour traffic on the interstate uh, going to work, and then also usually about an hour of it going home from work every day. So I'm perfectly okay with an automatic. I still shift it my, myself, usually. But... It's, you know, it's a lot nicer, uh, cause I, I drove my Ram, although my Ram is a extended cab, long bed, four wheel drive Ram. So it's, it's kind of a big boy and it's not the easiest thing to drive. Uh, yeah. Looking <laughs> for a Tagi? I'd, I'd daily a Tagi. Yeah, I don't, I don't know specifically how uh, hard or easy it would be to actually manual swap an LS400. <clears throat> Plus, like, I don't really care because I don't think the transmission's gonna go out on it. Like, that car, the transmission in that car is surprisingly quick shifting, and like, it doesn't take, like, you know, if I put it in the drive, it goes instantly in the drive. Or if I, if I put it in the reverse, it goes instantly in the reverse without hesitation. Uh, and it has 170,000 miles on it. And who knows when the last time the transmission fluid has been changed. So, uh, I'm not worried in the slightest about the transmission going out in it. Uh, I definitely don't expect it to. So, I don't really have a reason to manual swap it. Plus, like I said, I don't really care if it's automatic or manual. <clears throat> You know, somebody if you know has two hundred fifty thousand miles, some transmission does go out. Uh, maybe I think about it then, but like for now, I don't really care. Plus, I feel like the SC, the SC, because you could get it in the stick shift. <clears throat> it's probably a lot easier to swap the SC four hundred into a stick shift, even though it's a different engine. Um, but the LS four hundred obviously is. Uh, thank you for the host, Denny. Uh, never came in stick shift, so I feel like there's a slight problem there too. And the, the electronic system is probably completely different. Um, and just you know, other s silly things that make it hard to do something like that. And that's why you can't uh, you can't manual swap a Dodge Magnum in the slightest because the body electronics are included with the uh, or like they're they're completely intertwined with the engine electronics, and the engine electronics will not accept a manual transmission in the slightest. Uh, it's not one of those where you can just like trick the computer to being in the neutral and that's it. <clears throat> so that's really disappointing because I really want a Magnum SRT8, but I would really like to have a stick shift one. But 
Obviously, that's not really going to happen that easily unless they find out some silly way to do it. Hello, Denny. Welcome to the stream. How you doing? We're talking about car stuff. Unsurprisingly. Aw, oh, shit. Finna lap somebody. Maybe. I'm probably not actually going to lap anybody. Because I'm not doing that well. What the hell? There's people, like, right behind me. Oh, it's the uh, S15. I've just been, like, cruising for the last couple of laps, honestly. I haven't really been paying attention to, like, getting really good laps. That's a good thing about this, too, is having this on not super hard mode, is that I don't have to worry about, like, talking and losing. <clears throat> Manual valve body on it? I mean, you could. Fuck, you just put a carburetor on it. Just literally make it, like, you know, some sort of fucking... 90s Chevy truck that somebody LS swapped but put a carburetor on. And a Sektar and Nissan Level 2 reward. Down with the sickness, that's not good. And I would assume you don't mean you're listening to the Disturb song. Specifically. So we got awarded the 2000 Nissan Top Secret D1 Sylvia S15 something something something. 12,000 credits. Yada yada yada. There's our new Sylvia S15, top secret. It's kind of fast, but it's a it's a drifty boy, so not the greatest car. Um, but yeah, there we go. I did not take a picture of this car for a thumbnail. I'm going to have to do that between episodes, but whatever. So, completed Nissan Racing Clubs, blah, 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 blah. We have 66,000 credits, which is close enough to uh, getting something else. Don't really need to worry about it too much. But that will conclude this episode, so thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.